in the citrus groves of Florida, a menace is lurking. It's a silent but destructive force. It doesn't have the horsepower of a hurricane, the desperation of a drought, or the ferocity of a sudden freeze. But grower Paul Metter knows just how dangerous this threat is. Paul, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a younger tree inside of a, a mature orchard that's showing severe symptoms of greening. It's called citrus greening disease, caused by a bacterium that's spreading through Florida's citrus trees like wildfire. Once it attacks a tree, the oranges don't grow in their typical round shape. And we'll cut open the fruit with greening symptoms. And you can see it's off-centered. Of course, it's not just funny-shaped fruit with off-centered stems. In time, the disease can weaken the very core of the tree and cease its production of fruit. And what happens here to this fruit then? Well, typically it'll fall off. And if you look on the ground, that uh, you see a lot of fruit on the ground. Those are, those are uh, pieces of fruit that are showing severe symptoms of the green disease. It's an industry that's seen its share of challenges in the past. Hurricanes, freezes, and most recently, another disease called citrus canker have reduced the acreage of citrus by a third. But this latest challenge has folks here the most concern. Greening has been found in more than 30 Florida counties. Greening potentially has the ability, if left unchecked, to wipe out the entire industry. Fritz Roca is an agricultural economist with the University of Florida. He says losing the state's $9 billion citrus industry would send economic shockwaves across the state. Consumers could see a dramatic rise in the cost of orange juice and other citrus products, but it goes far beyond that, impacting everything from pickers, citrus growers, processors, shippers, to grocery stores. The second ripple effect would be the workers that pick the citrus, the workers that tend to the groves, the workers and the owners of these groves earn income. If you're taking away the, the infusion of, of cash and money that comes into the region or into the state because of citrus. The state's citrus growers, government agencies, and researchers are working to combat this menace, investing tens of millions of dollars in research. The first plan of attack was to cut down trees that show the first sign of the disease. But it can take two years for trees to show symptoms of greening, and deciding to cut down trees that are initially producing fruit is not easy for any grower. There were certain um, places where if, if you wanted to, to take out all the greening trees, you would have basically taken out their whole block. They would have lost everything. We didn't recognize the disease until it had already infested a good part of the state. So uh, you know, hopefully we're at the, at the change in the curve now and uh, we'll be able to, uh, to manage the disease a little more aggressively. The best hope right now seems to be going after the bug that carries the bacteria. Called a psyllid, it's a tiny flying bug that feeds on the sap of the citrus trees. And when it feeds on an infected tree and moves to another tree, it transfers the bacteria. Phil Stansley is an entomologist researching the tiny disease-carrying psyllid. Those are the little ones, yes. Yeah, those are the nymphs. So those are the immature stages. Those are the ones that pretty much pick up the disease and then the adults spread it around. In his research lab, Stansley and other researchers are studying one approach, beetles and tiny wasps that feed on the psyllids, reducing their numbers. For now, however, the growers are spraying pesticides to kill the psyllid. But spraying has its environmental and economic limitations. It's a stopgap is what it is until we come up with a more permanent solution. And um, what we're hoping for is that uh, through genetic um, changes, uh, improved varieties or whatever, we develop such a set is no longer susceptible to the uh, bacteria. Chemicals, genetic research, and battling bugs, all part of the arsenal. But in this war, with growers and scientists on the front lines, a magic bullet has so far been elusive. You can't look back and, uh, and be sad about what took place. You just got to keep looking forward and, uh, and, and hope for the best.